Hello everyone, it's Richard Lewis here again with another video. Uh, today I'm going to take a break from gaming and esports and all the usual stuff that we talk about in these videos. And instead I'm going to focus on something a lot more important in my opinion. And that is this announcement by YouTube that was made just moments ago at the time of recording this. Uh, about changes they're going to make to their website in a bid to combat terror. Which sounds great. But uh, I, I've got some issues with it because it looks like, while it is kind of, maybe, about combating terror, it seems really to be about censoring messages that advertisers wouldn't find particularly palatable. Now, I won't go over all of the Wall Street Journal gibberish again, um, because obviously that's been done to death. We've done it to death in this channel. You've seen other YouTubers like H3H3, Keemstar, these guys pick it up, even PewDiePie. Uh, so you know all about that, but just to give you the cliff notes, basically, uh, a, a, a journalist, uh, <laughs> I use that term loosely discovered that, you know, shock horror, uh, the random advertising algorithm, uh, on YouTube, uh, would put ads on videos that maybe had not, you know, unpleasant words in the title, unpleasant subjects, things that maybe the advertiser wouldn't directly want to be associated with. And they did a big expose, even though everybody knew that you, when you put your ads on YouTube, you have to st state specifically at the point you do that, where you want them to go and where you don't want them to go, or they're just going to be assigned at YouTube's behest. You're entering a deal with YouTube, not specific YouTubers. So anyway, uh, they did a big expose about it. This led on to something that was affectionately known as the adpocalypse. Every YouTube channel was affected, including this one, uh, where the ad revenue went down immensely as sponsors and marketers and advertisers all started to pull out of, of YouTube because they wanted reassurance that their ads weren't going to pop up next to something that was deemed to be hateful. Uh, some channels went down to like 10% of their original revenue. I think we went down to 40%, so we weren't particularly hit. Uh, and with a bit of fuckery in the keywords, you could mitigate some of this. But the bottom line was it was a, a bad thing for content creators, and it really showed where YouTube's priorities lie. It isn't with the content creators. It is with advertisers and marketers and marketing companies. So anyway, uh, one of the big calls, uh, call to arms from the Wall Street Journal was you've got to do something about this. And there was a few others that were beating the drum. We interviewed Eric Feinberg, for example, on this show. He is somebody that has patented an algorithm that will detect extremist terror. He wanted Google uh, to buy it and use it for YouTube. Uh, I don't know how that went. Um, we haven't caught up in a while. But basically, it was you must do something moving forward. And this has led YouTube to make... a few kind of stealthy, low-key announcements, which aren't blowing up in the mainstream media. I think this one might be a little bit different, honestly, because this seems a little bit crazy. But look, without any further ado, let's get to the official blog. And you can see it's uh, today, an update on our commitment to fight terror content online. And again, look, let's be clear, no one has a problem with YouTube fighting terror content online. I mean, the, the radicalization of terrorists is something that has to be stopped. Content that leads to that uh, certainly has no place on the YouTube platform. I think we can all agree with that. So you can see here, a little over a month ago, we told you about the four new steps we're taking to combat terrorist content on YouTube. Better detection and faster removal driven by machine learning. More experts to alert us to content that needs review. Tougher standards for videos that are controversial but do not violate our policies. And more work in the counterterrorism space. You'll notice they've used a method here which is called the shit sandwich. Uh, the shit sandwich is where you put something reasonable on one side, bread. You put something reasonable on the end, also bread. And you put shit in the middle and you hope people don't concentrate on the shit too much because you've been positive at either side. And they've done that here, you know, machine learning. You think, oh, that's good. Now I'll make it more effective. More work in counterterrorism. That's good. This bit here, tougher standards for videos that are controversial but do not violate our policies. What are those standards? Well, we're going to find out. So it talks about the machine learning here, uh, better detection and faster removal driven by machine learning. I'm always incredibly dubious 
about machine learning. It's why I was very um, skeptical about Candid uh, and that kind of thing. But obviously, machine learning is really the only way YouTube can operate if there is an immediate need to remove content. There's too much content being uploaded to YouTube. So the options are this. They either have to implement some form of machine learning or they limit the amount of content that's uploaded to their platform. Uh, I don't like the latter solution. So the, the former seems reasonable. Uh, you can see here that they're learning uh, and improving their systems here. Um, Machine learning systems are faster and more effective than ever before. 75% of the videos we've removed violent extremism over the past month were taken down before receiving a single human flag. Uh, the accuracy of our systems has improved dramatically, and you can see scale. It allows us to be everywhere all at once. So I'm not going to focus too much on uh, the machine learning thing other than to say uh, machine learning is all well and good, YouTube. But right now, what you don't have is a robust appeals process uh, that can be used, that if machine learning is inaccurate, uh, you send out a bunch of generic emails to people saying, look, my content's been removed. Please, can you just take a look at it? Can a human just look at it? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's going to be a problem moving forward. Machine learning is part of the issue. You must have a robust and clear appeals process for people who believe their content was removed in error. Until you've got that, rolling this out is a problem because the machine learning could you know, block more videos, right? And then you don't have an appeals process or you don't have people who are willing to take a look at things because of the man hours. So that's something to be mindful of. More experts. Now, this is where things start to get, dare I say it, problematic. Because keep in mind, they said this is about terror, right? So they must be talking to intelligence agencies and people with expertise in counterterrorism. No, they're not. Uh, you can see here, over the past weeks, we've begun working with more than 15 additional expert NGOs and institutions through our trusted flagger program, including the Anti-Defamation League, the No Hate Speech Movement, and the Institute for Strategic Dialogue. Now, I'm going to just move away from this blog here, and unfortunately, the way XSplit works means that I'm going to have to just reset these so you can't see it, because that's how it will display, unless I overcrank it for some reason because of transparency. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to... I want to talk about the Anti-Defamation League. The idea that they are credible experts in what constitutes hate, and keep in mind, they haven't even talked about hate yet. Nowhere has that appeared, you know. Uh, it's certainly not in the headline. It's about combating terror, right, and violent extremism. These are the words they've used. The Anti-Defamation League lost all credibility with, I'm, I'm sure, with all of you who watch my videos because they said Pepe was a fucking equivalent of a swastika. They said a cartoon frog was a symbol of hate. And they continued to embarrass themselves by expanding what is and what isn't white supremacist symbols. They basically danced to the tune of the progressive left now. And they state things that are patently absurd. Now, I certainly have an issue with the Anti-Defamation League dictating what is and what isn't hate speech if they classify Pepe as a symbol of hate speech. I've used a Pepe in a few of my videos. In fact, I've got a 50-minute video talking about the evolution of Pepe and how he became this ridiculous hate symbol. Me and Sam laughing about it, right? That's the producer, Sam, that way. Um... You know, what the fuck? Like, it, it, those are not credible experts you should be bringing to the table when it comes to censorship. They're hysterical. They're, it's absurd. But I looked at some of these other uh, companies and, and, you know, businesses that are supposedly going to be involved. And it's, it's terrifying. Uh, let me just find one for you here. Uh, hang on. So you saw that they had the... Uh, what they call the ISD, that's the Institute for Strategic Dialogue. Uh, so, you know, I, I clicked on that. And again, it it's, doesn't really look to be about terrorism. So I'll just bring up what that looks like here. Uh, so you can see for yourself. Uh, here it is. You can see it, it's all about, you know, powering grassroots networks worldwide against hate and extremism. And again, I th we all want to shut down extremism and we all want to shut down uh, hate speech, but all of a sudden, you know, the lines are kind of blurred, aren't they? 
you know like it, hate speech has become the okay symbol hate speech has become a cartoon frog we're being told that the alt-right a term that had nothing to do with neo-nazism or white supremacy just because it's been co-opted by richard spencer now means nazis and if anybody has ever used that term they can never renounce it or take it back we're seeing people just ridiculous choices of people like mike cernovich being added to databases on white supremacy because of his anti-feminist stance conflating all sorts of nonsense this concerns me even more this is the other uh, group that's been included you can see here the no hate speech movement and what it is, is a database to monitor, share, and discuss hate speech content on the internet, right? Well, what this means is, against your will, against your knowledge, somebody can see a tweet of yours, or an article you wrote, or a video you made, and they can upload it to this database, and it's there now. It's now archived as hate speech, I don't consider that a reasonable thing to be doing uh, to, at all. And it gets worse. You know, if you look at the front page, it says here's some of the recent reports that we've received. Uh, they're saying Donald Trump should be banned from Twitter after he tweeted out uh, his anti-trans in the military ban. And that hasn't been deleted as spam or stupid. I, I suppose that's taken as a credible report. These people are absurd, and I, I don't want these people deciding what YouTube videos can and can't stay on YouTube, but that's what YouTube are enabling. YouTube have said that's absolutely fine. We're, we're all about that life. So these are the people now that are going to be dictating whether or not, or partially dictating whether or not a video can stay, or whether it can't, or whether it's ju judged to be extreme, and everything else. Now... Keep in mind, again, you will notice that the Anti-Defamation League, the No Hate Speech Movement, the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, they're not talking about terrorism, are they? I mean, you didn't see any terrorism on the website. They're talking about hate. And this is where we kind of get into this battle of semantics. I suppose right-wing extremists, yes, they absolutely are uh, terrorists. When they organize, mobilize, and commit acts of terror, to a political end which is the definition of terrorism so i have no issue with that and it should be tackled uh, but it's the same for it, radical islam now i don't see any mention of that on any of these sites and if that was supposedly what this was all about maybe you've chosen some poor partners in terms of expertise i would have liked to have seen at least one expert in that particular field because there's no getting away from it unfortunately uh, radical Islamists are giving the rest of Islam a bad name uh, through their sustained campaigns against the West. And yes, they do use social media to radicalize and recruit. Twitter has had this problem with ISIS directly recruiting and advertising their atrocities on the Twitter platform. These are things to be concerned about. A Pepe in your video isn't. Anyway, now we can go back to these tougher standards because this is a problem for me. They're saying that even if you don't break the rules, if your content is of a certain type, it will be held up to more rigid standards than other types of content. This is a way of framing bias, ladies and gentlemen. That's what they're doing. They are saying, hey, we're going to be biased towards certain types of content, but there's a good reason for it, and we're going to try and explain that reason now. So I'm going to go back to uh, this page here, the original one. You'll have to excuse me while I just reset the uh, the color uh, here, because it's a bit of a... Hang on, which way do I go? Yes, there it is, right. So, tougher standards, all right? We'll soon be applying tougher standard tre tougher treatment to videos that aren't illegal, but have been flagged by users as potential violations of our policies on hate speech. And again, they include violent extremism. If we find that these videos don't violate our policies, but contain controversial religious or supremacist content, they will be placed in a limited state. Now, 
these terms and, and and all big companies do this all big social media companies do this all big media companies do this they like to have nebulous terms don't they they like to have terms that they will never quantify that they will never specify because then they can't apply them as and when they want then there's no leeway to be biased there's no leeway to show preference if you define something clearly then there's no room for negotiation on it. And they absolutely can't have that because companies like this must play favorites. Now, for example, I've seen plenty of videos on YouTube that condemn white people and say white people should be killed, that we need a race war, that, that white people are somehow inherently evil. Uh, you, they ref, if you refuse to acknowledge your white prejudice, you should be put in prison. Yeah, I've seen it all, okay? Now, I've also seen videos of Holocaust deniers. I've seen videos of people that talk about ridiculous things like uh, the white the white race being superior to the black race. All of those people to me are hateful and all of those people are engaging in hate speech yet it's only one set of videos uh, you know that the latter two examples that i see get deleted meanwhile it's become the norm even in academic circles to it's okay to say white people deserve to die i think if you say anybody deserves to die predicated on nothing more than the color of their skin you are a racist that is my definition that is the dictionary definition that is what it has always meant and all the hand wringing in your academic institutions where progressives have tried so hard to alter established definitions to suit their agenda it's not going to change what the average person thinks and nor should it be allowed to uh, skirt on this platform. But they haven't said that, have they? It's religious and supremacist content. Uh, so in other words, how I will take this is, if somebody attacks Christianity, it will be fine. If somebody attacks Islam, it will not be fine. Supremacist, if somebody says white people deserve to die, it will be deemed a thought exercise. If somebody says something derogatory about people of color, it will be removed. That is certainly the rule that's in place. This appears to me to be a more open, yet still Orwellian and masked attempt to bring that rule in. Now, obviously, I could be wrong about this, Maybe the vagueness of language is because they do intend to uh, equally enforce things. But I, I don't know. I, I've certainly got my concerns. This looks to me to be a way to clamp down on your Paul Joseph Watsons, your Cernoviches, your Stefan Molyneux. You know who these people are. You might not agree with their views, but they don't violate YouTube's policies. And they have hugely successful YouTube channels. And this seems to be the back door through, wi through which they will get them, finally. The videos will remain on YouTube behind an interstitial, won't be recommended, won't be monetized, and won't have key features including comments, suggested videos, and likes. So in other words, this is kind of the video equivalent of a shadow ban. Your video will not be removed. You might not even be aware that it is in this state. But you will not get money for it. You Comments will not be allowed on it. Suggested videos will not pop up and people will not be able to like it. You will only realize through the lack of engagement. And then it says here, we'll begin to roll this new treatment out to videos on desktop versions in the coming weeks. And we'll bring it to mobile experiences soon thereafter. These new approaches entail significant new internal tools and processes and will take time to fully implement. So in other words, uh, we're going to see what we can get away with <laughs> as we roll this out. And if it causes a huge backlash, we'll put it down to it being teething problems. So uh, now it gets to the stuff that sure we can we can totally uh again agree with this or can we well let's have a look uh it says here we've started rolling out features from jigsaw's redirect method to youtube and this is when people search for sensitive keywords on youtube they'll be redirected towards a playlist of curated youtube videos that directly confront and debunk violent extremist messages well hang on a minute i thought we were removing violent extremist content I thought we're removing it. There's no need to redirect. But 
here, here's what here's what they're talking about now. This this new method, which has been tried and tested, is basically if people search for certain things. Uh, again, let's say for example, you were an idiot who didn't think the Holocaust happened, and you looked at Holocaust denial on YouTube. Uh, it would. It might bring you up a video of somebody saying, this is why it didn't happen, it's all a conspiracy, you know, some moron like that. But what it'll actually do is it'll direct you uh, to the contrary, to, to evidence. Now that, to me, seems perfectly fine when framed like that. This is, again, ripe for abuse, though, isn't it? Uh, for example, uh, we, we might see a video from, again, let's use Paul Joseph Watson as an example. Paul Joseph Watson might put a video out and instead of you, you might want to have his opinions. Well, instead of getting his opinions, you're directed to something that counters it. Now, who is to say and who is to measure that the counter to a Paul Joseph Watson video is in any way more accurate or reliable than the Paul Joseph Watson video itself? Who are making those determinations? It's not clear, is it? Um, and that's a problem to me because we've seen other companies... And, and indeed, Google, again, got in bed with people like Snopes, who we know aren't partisan. And it's for the fake news detector on Google. And this is about controlling a message. Yes, some sources are unreliable. It's up to the reader to determine that. You've got to be sensible. But ever since Trump got elected, people are like, oh my God, this wouldn't have happened without the blogosphere. So now, people who don't want to see a Trump type get elected again, they're doubling down and they're controlling messages through their platform. We've seen Zuckerberg do this with Facebook, getting in bed with media companies, having websites that are deemed to be unreliable removed regardless of whether or not their reporting is sound. We've seen Infowars completely blanket banned on Reddit. And again, I'm no big believer in Infowars uh, as a source. I certainly wouldn't ever cite them as credible. But what I will say is they're not wrong on every single piece they put out. <laughs> they don't deserve to be blanketly censored by a big company like that. People have to be sensible enough to determine themselves what is fake and what isn't. And you should apply that to all media. When you get in bed with a group like Snopes and they say well you could totally believe the mainstream media over here when we see hundreds of retractions every year from the mainstream media where they got things wrong yet in no way does this seem to harm their credibility meanwhile people are like well these websites are bad and they publish fake news why people should be as equally cynical so this is again concerning because it seems to me to be a way to control uh, the message and and decide what information is valid on behalf of you well i don't like that you should have the sense in your head to be able to make that determination without the help of a big corporation that has a vested interest in getting a democrat into the white house anyway continues it goes we will also continue to amplify youtube voices speaking out against hate and radicalization through our youtube creators for change program this is basically where they take uh, a bunch of youtubers who you know I, I, there's some decent content creators in amongst them but there's certainly some i've never heard of and i don't think their content is anything to shout about but they give them a platform because what they're doing is they represent either a minority group or they're talking about problems that a minority group faces or specifically they talk about radicalization and uh, t terrorism so fine you do that it's your platform you do what you want uh they hosted a workshop blah 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 and we also pledge to expand the program's reach to 20,000 more teens across the UK teens of course uh over the weekend we hosted our latest creators for change workshop in Bandung Indonesia where creators teamed up with Indone Indonesia's Marif Institute to teach young people about the importance of diversity pluralism and tolerance and all together we have taken significant steps over the last month in our fights against online terrorism but this is not the end we know there is always more work to be done with the help of new machine learning technology deep partnerships ongoing collaborations with other companies through the global internet forum and our vigilant community shout out to all you YouTube heroes of course we are confident we can continue to make progress against this ever-changing threat. We look forward to sharing more with you in the months ahead. So, 
uh, you know, look, I don't know. Am I am I am I paranoid? Am I crazy? Does this does this not sound like they're not really focused on the radicalization of uh, people to join Islamic terrorist groups, to join any terrorist group? It actually sounds to me what they're particularly bothered about is their platform being used by popular counterculture iconoclasts to present alternative messages to the mainstream media and to the progressive left I, I maybe i'm reading too much into it but that's what it looks like to me and I, i've got grave concerns about what they're talking about i don't like the idea of i go to find a video it's not there hey but here's a video that says the complete opposite just in case let's get those thoughts out your head how do i know this is accurate we're telling you it is this is this is crazy and it's going a bit too far for me. Now, also, I don't believe in coincidences when it comes to big companies. So at the time of recording this, I, it was just brought to my attention that, and it's the issue has been resolved now. And again, I'll just uh, quickly reset all the colors. But uh, Jordan Peterson tweeted out that his YouTube account had been disabled with no explanation given, and he couldn't access it at all and then this was resolved a few hours later no message no explanation no nothing guess there's a few gremlins in the system weird how they always seem to target the same people isn't it so yeah keep an eye on this because it's another step towards certain types of content not being welcome on youtube and it's not the type you think it is Nobody wants white supremacists recruiting on YouTube. Nobody wants radical Islamists recruiting on YouTube. Nobody wants that. The people who are going to get swept up and penalized don't represent either of those two things. This is about sanitizing YouTube, and now they've got the license to do it, and they'll do it wholesale. My opinion. Anyway, if you disagree, you know what to do. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, but certainly, yeah. We need a viable YouTube alternative, and we need it soon, I think. Otherwise, a lot of people are going to gonna struggle, and uh, there's going to be a lot of hard work for nothing. Smaller creators like myself, probably is going to have been a complete waste of time. All it's going to take is somebody to link them to one episode of my podcast, and that's that, isn't it? Out of the game. So, yeah. Dark times ahead, but we'll muddle through. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I'll catch you on the next one.